obesity might seem like a tough challenge and weight loss a significant journey. Well, you are right. But you are not alone in your endeavors as I'm here to share my weight loss journey with you to inspire you to start your own. Being once obese doesn't define your future. It's a starting point for a change. I should know because today I am a registered dietitian. So get ready for a story that will hopefully motivate and inspire you to start your own journey. Stick around until the end because additionally I will provide best weight loss tips that really work. Hello my dears and welcome. I am Marina, a registered dietitian with a passion for helping people facing the challenges of obesity and weight loss. Today I am excited to share my personal weight loss journey with you. It was a life-changing experience that ultimately led me to discover my true calling and passion, helping other fellow warriors and providing them with valuable nutritional guidance. I'll also be sharing practical, tried and true weight loss tips that can make a real difference if you put them into practice. If you are ready to kickstart your own weight loss journey, let's dive right in. As far back as I can remember, food has been a major part of my life. In my early years, I had a positive relationship with food. We were the best of friends, celebrating all the good times together, and I absolutely cherished our connection. I was an active kid, but I always had a bit of extra padding. Part of it came from spending summers with my grandparents in Serbia, where the food is absolutely delicious, hearty, and let's face it, a bit on the heavy side. If you are familiar with Serbian cuisine and their relationship with food, you know what I mean. Being the good child I was, I embraced every culinary delight. I learned that food was meant to be enjoyed with no restrictions because a child has to eat a lot to grow up. I also discovered that adults often express their love through sweets and treats and a slice of cake could miraculously turn a frown into a smile. As I got older, my relationship with food took a different turn. I was an only child and my parents were swamped with work, so I became quite independent at an early age. Loneliness crept in and that's when I started turning to food for comfort. I didn't realize it at the time, but food became my coping mechanism for dealing with some heavy emotions and gradually I started to gain weight. Although chubby, I was quite an active kid, always dancing, riding bike, and playing outside. I joined the basketball team, but I was consistently the slowest runner on the field due to my size, but had more success under the basket because the size decided who would push the basket better. Down the path, training got really intense and running became my arch nemesis due to some chafing issues that left me with some scars. As I packed on a few extra pounds, I also collected a few extra sprains and injuries along the way. Despite my outgoing nature and boundless energy, the bullying and fat shaming got under my skin, but it wasn't always in your face. Just with those subtle comments and judgmental stares, those were enough to make me feel self-conscious and not too thrilled about my body. So I turned to food even more and I didn't view it as a fuel for activity, but eating was joyful activity in itself. It was something to do even when I didn't know what to do and how to say what I feel. I ate when I was bored, bitter, disappointed, guilty, lonely or empty. And yes, even when I was cheerful because you have to celebrate with a cake. I started eating even when I wasn't physically hungry and a lot of times I ate in secret. I messed up a lot of bed sheets when eating alone in the middle of the night, carefully unwrapping chocolate paper so it doesn't make a sound and wakes up my parents. Those candy wrappers was then in every secret place in my small room or hidden in empty purses. It's sad because looking back, I now realize that this was the start of my BED, but back then I just saw myself as a foodie on the good days and lazy fat girls on the bad ones. The pounds continued to pile on and by the time I hit high school at 15, I was rocking 220 pounds or around 100 kilograms. 
Growing up, I was quite the character. I believe in the stereotype that fat people are supposed to be all bubbly and happy. Not to say I wasn't a cheerful kid, I had great friends, but my size and my not so healthy eating habits really bothered me. And back in the 2000s, the media loved to shove those skinny ideals down our throats, which was not the best environment for a young girl with a food and body issues. But we have to remember bodies come in all shapes and sizes, and we should never judge anyone by their appearance. In school, I was lucky that I didn't face much stigma, but I was more often the buddy and less often the girlfriend due to my size. On the outside, those rejections appear unimportant and brushed off easily, since my effort to be seen as powerful was well portrayed, but when left alone, I filled that void with chocolate. However, I had a secret weapon, my deep passion for dance. I quit basketball and decided to join dance school and boy was I excited to express myself through movement. I felt like I was rocking it until I saw myself in the mirror. All the other girls in my class were so much thinner and when we needed costumes, I was the only one wearing a men's size tracksuit. Shopping for clothes was also never fun. It was never ending nightmare. Finding something that fit me was like discovering a unicorn and it was never fashionable because size inclusivity wasn't a thing back then. But you know what? I didn't let any of this stop me from dancing my heart out and at one point even teaching kids classes and that love still burns strong. One day, as a rebellious teenager, I decided I had enough of being on the plump side. I went on a wild online diet adventure combining strict regimens like the cabbage soup diet into an extreme plan. I was basically starving for two months and dropped about 80 pounds. But hold up, wait a minute. This is not that story about healthy weight loss. That is just a bad preview, okay? Anyway, I was kind of proud of that weight loss, but I was baffled by how people suddenly approved of me and thought I was fabulous. I was like, wait, I'm still the same girl, just in a narrower edition. It made no sense to me because people should be treated no matter their size. And today I understand and I agree, losing weight is a big achievement, but it shouldn't change how we treat people. After that first weight loss experience, I really struggled to keep the weight off because I had zero knowledge of proper nutrition and yo-yo effect with ravishing hunger is to be expected after a crash diet. I couldn't stick to my strict diet for long and eventually gave into my hunger and old eating habits. It didn't take long for the pounds to come back and I even gained some extra just in case, <laughs> and was back at 220 to 30 pounds. I didn't realize the importance of addressing the root causes of my unhealthy eating habits, including my BED and caring for my both physical and mental health. But today, as a registered dietitian, I emphasize the importance of balanced, healthy approach to weight management. And for everyone in the back, let me say it again. Crash diets, starvation, and elimination of entire fruit groups. It's not the way to go, as those methods can be really dangerous for long-term health. After high school, I went to college and enrolled in law school, even though I wasn't particularly passionate about it. And around that time, I met my current partner who loved me for who I was and never made me feel bad about my size. I love you, baby. Everything was lovey-dovey, but then life came along in the form of exams, disease in the family, financial problems, and so on. And those were great new excuses for reconnecting with my old friend. Chocolate. <laughs> Overall, I had some pretty unhealthy eating habits, such as sugary sodas, daily doses of sweets, skipping breakfast, and then having massive meals later in the day. My protein intake was too low and my carb and fat intake were off the charts. I was in a caloric surplus, consuming too many calories and it was all piling on the weight. My diet was a hot mess. Rarely fruits, barely veggies and of course binge eating episodes that had their own structure with savory first and sweet as the seconds. And then came 
the rock bottom. It was December 2010. I didn't even know who I was and what I wanted out of life and was bitter about my weight because those feelings about it affected every other aspect of my life. I felt worthless and redundant, like I was the one responsible for everybody's problems. I didn't like myself and I didn't believe others liked me. My partner saw that this was causing me distress as I was constantly complaining and self-depreciating, especially during one of my classic meltdowns over Christmas holidays in 2010. And then he gave me a piece of advice that stuck with me today. Either accept yourself the way you are and stop whining because you are great or change it. I chose the latter and made a promise to myself to embark on a weight loss and healthier eating journey in the next decade. But most importantly, I wanted to break free from food controlling my emotions and prevent any other further complications from obesity. Of course, before 2011 kicked in, I indulged in all the Christmas goodies, cookies, cakes, French salad, but then it was showtime. So, what did I do to lose the weight? In the next part of the video, I will tell you about the most important tips that I follow in my weight loss journey, which are practically the holy grail of weight loss. They are also supported by scientific literature in the field of nutrition. I will be hitting the highlights because if I would cover everything, this video would be longer than a Harry Potter marathon. Time frame and patience. When embarking on this journey, I had many epiphanies. For the first time in my life, I re realized that I couldn't lose weight in two weeks with some crash diet. Then I cried a little inside because I want what I want and I want it now. <laughs> the truth is, if you have a lot of weight to lose, it's a long way to go. You have to give yourself enough time to really change eating behaviors and settle into new diet, exercise regime and slowly change all the other behaviors that led you to obesity. And that takes time. Be realistic and flexible and focus on the bigger picture. I grabbed the fact that it will take the months to lose weight so I divided my goals into smaller milestones and celebrated small achievements. Like that one time when I decided I will not get the cheeseburger for dinner but had the power to grab one for my partner and the smell didn't even faze me. That was a win in my book. Motivation and discipline. Motivation and discipline play distinct roles in the journey of weight loss. Motivation acts as the initial spark where excitement, goals and positive mindset kickstart the process. Motivation is the why you want to lose weight in the first place. For me, it was mental and physical health and desire to learn to eat properly without feeling guilty or ashamed. I wanted to look better and be more fit and finally go shopping in the normal stores where all the other girls go. Ultimately, I just wanted to be normal, however silly that may sound. So first, figure out your why. No matter how strong your initial motivation is, it won't last forever. Eventually, things will get really tough and believe me, there were days I just wanted to quit and eat the cake. <laughs> That's where the discipline comes in form of doing healthy things every day over and over until they become a habit and routine. Discipline will take you places where motivation can't. Setting clear goals. Setting clear and specific weight loss goals provides you with something tangible to work toward. My goals were smart. I want it and I did lose 80 pounds in a year. That goal was specific, I could measure it, it was attainable at the time, and it had a time frame. For me, it was realistic, as I was 21 years old, student, part-time dance teacher with no kids and major responsibilities. I lived with my partner in our own household so I could cook and take care of my food, and the good sport he is, he ate the same, just a bit more. This approach also worked in terms of nutrition and exercise, but later on that. 
learning about nutrition. Learning about the basics of nutrition like calorie, energy need, protein, etc. is an important step in the process of achieving sustainable weight loss. One of the main benefits of learning about nutrition is that it helps us make more informed choices about the foods we eat. Understanding macronutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins and fats and micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals is crucial. I found that the key to healthy eating was balancing these elements in a way that worked for my body. Calorie deficit. Calorie deficit is a key player in the weight loss game. In simple terms, a calorie deficit is when the body burns more energy, meaning calories, that it takes in, which leads to weight loss. We can achieve calorie deficit through diet by making healthier food choices, such as choosing foods that are lower in calories and reducing portion sizes. Another way is to increase the number of calories burned through physical activity. But it is very difficult to create a calorie deficit just by exercising. More on that later, but it's best to focus on the diet for creating a deficit through dietary changes, but also be active for overall health benefits. On my journey, I learned about calories, but at the time I didn't need to count them as I was achieving calorie deficit with other strategies, such as high protein and fiber intake, portion control and others. I also followed 80-20 rule, where in 80% of the time I ate whole foods and in 20% I allowed myself more fun foods, higher in calories, but still with portion control in mind. Protein intake. Protein is an essential macronutrient that plays a crucial role in weight loss. It's more satiating than carbohydrates or fats and it also helps to preserve muscles during weight loss. I included protein-rich foods in every meal and aim for higher protein intakes at around 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. I choose lean proteins such as lean meats, fish, low-fat yogurts and cheeses, eggs, legumes, protein shakes and other substitutes. Higher protein diets do result in a significantly greater fat loss compared to moderate or low-protein diets. I had not had problem with protein intake as I love those foods and I even love to eat liver and I crave it during my red days. Maybe weird, but a great source of iron and other nutrients. High fiber foods. High fiber foods such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes have been shown to aid in weight loss through several mechanisms. They promote satiety, regulate blood sugar levels and are low in calories. Fruit was not a problem as I love my fruit and I ate it as part of my sweet breakfast with granola and Greek yogurt or as a snack. I also started to eat more vegetables and I used them to make my portions high volume but low calorie. I was never against eating veggies but they were not the greatest culinary pleasure for me so I usually forgot to eat them before weight loss journey. Now I dress them up with different herbs and spices, I add mustard, Greek yogurt and add them to my savory meals. I always keep a convenient bag of frozen wedges in my freezer. If you don't like a lot of vegetables, it's okay, eat the ones you like but eat them regularly but maybe try something new. Portion control. At first I did struggle with portion control because I could eat a lot. I wasn't used to the feeling of not so full stomach, but water, warm teas and coffee help with that. Portion control will of course look different for different people depending on numerous factors such as starting body weight, gender, number of meals and so on. Although a rough guide, you can use the healthy eating plate model to help with your portion control if weighing your food isn't appealing. Or you can use hands as a serving guide smaller plates, eating slowly, sitting down and ordering smaller or kid-sized portion in restaurants is also useful because portions today enormous. With portion control you still can have the foods you like but just a tiny bit less. High calorie foods and now a million dollar question can you have your cake and eat it too or other high calorie foods? 
High calorie foods are foods that contain large amounts of calories per serving as they are often high in fat, sugar, carbs, and con can contribute to excessive calorie intake and weight gain. But I believe that you can have your cake and eat it because I had it. If we deem those high calorie foods as bad foods and eliminate them from diet plan, we often feel deprived and it just feeds that all or nothing mentality that can lead to restrict binge cycle. Been there, done that, so I had my desserts two times a week, but I had to practice portion control, so one slice and no seconds or thirds. <laughs> Cakes are there to be enjoyed, but not every day and not in big quantities. It is what it is, <laughs> because weight loss occurs when we are in caloric deficit. And if high calorie foods are high in calories, the verdict is in. They can be a part of a diet, but less often and in smaller quantities. There is no way around it. Yes, calories are queens, but portion size is the king. My partner was great sport in that department and my biggest supporter altogether. When we wanted cookies and we did not have them in the house, he went next door to his mother, got them and ate them in the bathroom so he wouldn't tempt me. I guess he's a keeper. <laughs> That's another thing. Don't store your cupboards with high calorie junk foods. If they are there, you will eat them. Of course, if you already have down your portion control and self-discipline, it's not a problem. But try to buy smaller packages for yourself as we tend to finish the whole package at once. And when you buy big ones, remember, sharing is caring. Hydration. Staying well hydrated is often overlooked, but it's crucial for weight loss. Water won't make you magically thinner, but sometimes our bodies can confuse thirst with hunger, leading to unnecessary snacking. Drinking water not only keeps you hydrated, but can also help you control your appetite. I always drank a lot of water, juices, milk, everything, so I was hydrating well as I am a sweater. <laughs> but I drank a lot of my calories. So I swapped juices and soft drinks and drank only water and other non-caloric drinks. If you are not used to proper hydration, you can set daily water intake goal, track it, keep a bottle with you, add some flavor to your water, and so on. And if you like your soft drinks, just swap them for non-caloric options so you don't drink those liquid calories. Then you can gradually swap them for water. Exercise. A lot of people think that exercise is key to successful weight loss, but it really isn't. It's common knowledge that exercise has many health benefits, both physically and mentally. But the truth is that exercise alone for most does not guarantee successful weight loss. It is very difficult to create a calorie deficit just by exercising as it would require a tremendous amount of effort. Plus, we tend to really overestimate energy expenditure during exercise because we think we burn two Big Macs in 30 minutes of aerobic, but most likely we're burned off one bite of it. Also, the introduction of heavy exercise regime can lead to other compensatory mechanisms such as increased hunger, fatigue, and lower energy expenditure for other daily activities. Therefore, it's important to focus on your diet and creating a deficit through dietary changes. So, should we become couch potatoes? Of course not. But we should reframe how we think about exercise. We don't need to exercise because we want to lose weight, but because we need it for good health. My exercise was and still is dancing. Back then, I hit the floor two to three times a week, was going for a longer walks, and swam at the pool in the summer. Later, down the path, I leveled up my fitness game and dived into more serious training. I lifted weights, got my heart pumping with cardio, and added Zumba to my dance routine. The cherry on top? I recently learned how to ride a horse, something I never thought was possible due to my previous weight, and I also leveled up my walking game with my precious Kiki. You can start with an exercise you enjoy, something that doesn't make you cringe at the thought of it. The key is to find what works for you. 
Meal planning. It is important to take time to plan meals, groceries and physical activity in advance because there is an increased chance of actually sticking to a plan and reaching goals. It helps us to avoid making impulsive food choices. When we have a plan for what will we eat, it is less likely for us to reach for high calorie snacks or make decisions that sabotage our weight loss efforts. By planning ahead, we can ensure that we have the necessary ingredients on hand to make balanced meals and reduce the temptations to eat out or order a takeout. Weight loss is complicated enough and we don't have a total control over the number on the scale, but we can control what and how much we eat and move. The more we plan, the less we have to panic because goal without a plan is just a wish. Self-monitoring. Self-monitoring is an important component of successful weight loss. It involves tracking, recording food intake, physical activity and weight, photos or other body measurements over time. It can help with becoming more aware of behavior and habits. I used food journal that was like my personal accountability coach. I did it old school with pen and paper and wrote down everything I ate in a day. I didn't count calories, just made sure I followed my diet plan and did my dancing and walking. I used to be really good at convincing myself that I was making healthy choices, but seeing everything written down in black and white made it easier for me to be honest with myself about my nutritional decisions. I actually kept a food diary for several years and noticed a funny pattern. Whenever I had a day where my eating habits were so great, my notes were always scrolled and messy, but when I had clean and organized menu, everything was neatly written down. I also weighed myself regularly. Self-monitoring is also supported by science. The type of self-monitoring used, as well as the frequency with which it's performed, can vary depending on, on individual preferences, but regular self-monitoring is crucial for weight loss success and weight maintenance. I know some of us had or still have a love, but mostly hate relationship with our scales, but they are just one piece of the puzzle and merely a data that can give us some insight into our journey but not the whole picture. And definitely, they do not determine our self-worth. Support. Another important tip is to find support. I had my support in the form of my partner, who really was and still is today someone who supports my journey and my lifelong battles with food and today my dietitian practice. He would cheer me on through the process, Question me when I made a big ass salad for dinner and he didn't understand volume eating. He didn't tempt me or buy foods I didn't want in the house. He ate everything I cooked and so on. It was easier having the support when my whole family was supporting, especially my mother, which herself lost a lot of weight and actually was the first in the family to start making changes. Today, she is always in the front row, listening to my lectures and taking pictures like some paparazzi. So find your people, your community, our channel. You are in your corner, but it's easier if you don't stand alone there. Managing emotions and stress. And lastly, then there are emotions. When I embarked on my weight loss journey, I dwelt into professional literature and self-education. To my surprise, I discovered that my eating habits were not just occasional emotional overeating, but in fact, I exhibited symptoms of BED. Although I never received an official diagnosis and did not seek the help of healthcare professionals, I was able to address the issue on my own. However, as a dietitian today, I do not recommend this approach to others struggling with BED as the support of a dietitian or other healthcare professional is crucial. Combining weight loss and solving BED is rarely successful and should be approached with caution. But even if you don't struggle to that extent, I'm sure that some of us use food as a coping mechanism in times of negative emotional states and stress and are eating for, for comfort rather than hunger. There's the reason some foods are called comfort food. 
So it is important to recognize your eating habits and emotions as unaddressed emotional eating can quickly derail or weight loss efforts. Stress and weight gain are connected as it can trigger overeating, particularly of high calorie and comfort foods, leading to an increased caloric intake. Remember the acronym HALT, which stands for hungry, angry or anxious, lonely and tired. If you are physically hungry, eat. If you are tired, rest. And if you are, if you are experiencing difficult emotions, ask, what do I need? and give yourself what you truly need. If you're not hungry, it isn't food. Maybe it's just a hug, even if you give it to yourself. I spent a great deal of time exploring the root causes of my obesity and overeating. So I started talking a lot to myself and other people and pouring out my emotion instead of eating them literally. I remember in-depth debates with my family, sometimes ending in a fight and sometimes with hugs. And long talks with myself in the bathroom mirror. And somehow we push through. As you push through these tips that we covered. So to bring my story to an end. A year passed and I lost 80 pounds. With that, came a newfound sense of pride and accomplishment because along the way I learned that weight loss, although simple, can be incredibly difficult. But the reward were worth it. Daily tasks became easier, my energy levels skyrocketed and I even slept better. You can't imagine the joy of coming to a store when in the past I couldn't buy a single dress but then all of a the sudden they all fit me and even look nice on. I had to change the whole wardrobe all the way to the bras because everything was too big. Well, the bra part sucked. <laughs> but the most interesting thing was people started asking me for advice. I could tell them about my experience, but I didn't dare to give them hardcore advice about nutrition, macros, because I didn't know those things. But I like to motivate them to take the first step to try just for one day not to eat the whole chocolate and to think about the reasons behind their problems with food and weight. After all, I've learned that it's not just what you eat, it's about what's eating you. I always wanted to help people, but I knew I didn't have enough knowledge so to really make a difference, so I started learning. I delved deeper into the subject of nutrition and dietetics. I discovered my true calling and purpose of it all. To help others achieve their own weight loss goals through sharing my story and knowledge. And right then and there, 13 years ago, I made the bold decision to leave law school and pursue a degree in dietetics. I graduated with honors from Faculty of Health Sciences, enrolled in a dietetics master program, became a registered dietitian, and only then did I trust that I could pass the knowledge to other people for living. Today, 13 years later, I am at the healthy weight, although not my lowest. Weight maintenance deserves its own story as it has some twists and turns. But that's life. Now, after a decade working one-on-one -on -one with clients, lecturing and practicing dietetics, we are here on this YouTube channel, baby, and are ready to share my passion with you and help you on your own weight loss journey. I'm honored to be a part of it because my story is yours too, and I can't wait to hear it. Thank you for watching, my dears, and I guess I'm a YouTuber now, so please like, and subscribe if this video was helpful. Bye and see you soon in the next video.